How's the review going? Everybody doing their review? Good, good. Okay, yeah, finish the review, finish the review. All right, then. Anybody need another minute on their review? Let me know in the chat. Let me know you're still awake. Hello. Okay, good. I'm glad you're using it. So, super. All right, well, <clears throat> while I introduce the next section, if you're still going to be taking your notes, finishing them up, go ahead and do that. I'm going to go on to the next page here and remind us how we're going to approach. We want to make sure that we keep the question types in mind as we approach the passages, How, whether we do it passage first or question first. We want to recognize the kinds of questions that we know we're going to see and <clears throat> be thinking about those kinds of questions when we read the passage. So the important details, the important details, those are going to be supporting details, examples, they will be uh, details that let us know the author's tone, stuff like that. We want to know the main idea or the gist of the passage. We want to know what the key thing is that's going on. We want to be able to summarize the passage, answer questions that ask us what the whole passage is about and why did the author write it. <clears throat> we need to answer questions about relationships, comparisons, how things are like or different, also known as contrast, cause and effect, one event predictably results for another, and then sequences of continuation <clears throat> where we have examples or another idea or one thing or steps in a process. We want to be paying close attention to those. 
and vocab. How does the author use words to convey ideas, particularly in the context of the passage? What does that word mean here? What job is it doing? All right. And then the author's voice. What's the author's point of view? How do they communicate that to us? Do they like idea X? Do they think it can be improved or whatever it is? We want to make sure we understand the author's take on the main topic and what the author wants us to think. <clears throat> All right. Questions first strategy. Read and identify the question types as you go through. You can star the reference lines and paragraphs in the passage while you're reading the questions. If it says line 42, just make a little mark on line 42. So when you get back there, when you're reading, you know that there's going to be, you're going to get questioned about it. So you can like pay close attention to it. <clears throat> you know, circle those big picture questions and do them last purpose and summary questions. That way you will have gotten through a lot of the information in the passage and you'll pre be prepared to answer those and determine which questions you plan to answer. If you just decide, you know, based on your target score that you're not going to answer any questions that ask about the purpose of the passage, make sure that you skip those. Then you read the answer, the passage, looking for those answers and always, always, always find the answers. And where do we look for the answer? Where will the answers always be? Just let me know in the chat. Where will we always find the answer to the questions on the SAT? That's right. They will be in the passage. If an answer choice gives you information that isn't in the passage, even if you know it's true, can it possibly be the correct answer? What do you think? Even if it's true, say there's a like a science passage and they mention something and they don't, talk about it in the passage, but they give it as an answer choice. Could that be the correct answer on test day? What do you think? Let me know. No, that's right. It cannot be. No, no, no. If it is not in the passage, it cannot be the correct answer. Remember who writes the question, uh, the wrong answer choices. Who writes the wrong answer choices? It's trolls. That's right, trolls. So they might pop in some general knowledge that a lot of people know about, oh, I don't know, a novel that somebody wrote or a scientific uh, phenomenon or something like that. If it's not in the passage, it can't be the correct answer. So that's right. Trolls write the wrong answer choices. Always find the correct answer in the passage and then match it to the answer choice. All right. Now that we've reviewed our strategies, <clears throat> it's time for that first one was our warm-up. That was warm-up number one. All right. This time we're going to do our 10-question custom test in the app. And what this time you get to pick your own four so pick your own pick your own uh, test topics all right and pick two to four so pick two to four don't overwhelm it don't try and get all of them at one time Right, because even on test day, you're not going to see all the question types on all the passages every time. Depending upon the passage, they will have, you know, different kinds of questions. All right, so let me know in the chat when you are ready, when your test is prepared and you're ready to go. Just give me an R in the chat when you're ready. Yeah, 10 questions, 10 questions. Good, sorry about that. 10 questions, 10 questions, 10 questions. Okay, yep, we'll wait. I'm waiting. I'm waiting till everybody's ready.
All right, looks like people are getting ready. If you gave me a, a W a minute ago and you're ready now, let me know. We're doing reading. Yep, we're doing reading. We're going to focus on reading tonight. Well, later on we'll have some open we'll have some open seasons. We'll uh you'll get to pick your own, but that'll be towards the end. All right. Anybody need a little bit more time? If you're ready, if you give me a W before and you've given me an R, and I guess we're ready to start. All righty. So I'm going to give a countdown. 10, 9, 8, 10. Pick 10 questions. I have to start my countdown again. <laughs> All right, already? Great. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition. Houston, we have liftoff. All right. <clears throat> just like uh, just like always, I'm going to mute my audio and pause my screen so that I won't be disturbing you while you're working on the test. If you have any questions, pop me the question in the chat. Let me know in the chat, and I will answer you. All right. So off I go, voice wise. Take a couple of minutes and review, making notes in your notebook, the questions on the test we just took. And remember, 
teams that score beyond. If you have any questions that are too complicated to put into the chat or something like that, just let me know. Pop those in there. Pop those in. All right, anybody need a little more time on your notes? Let me know in the chat. Okay, take your time. Take your time. Right, this is this is where you're going to build your understanding of how you work in the test environment and what to avoid and what to do on test day. So let's take some time is it's important that we pay attention to the results that we produce so we know how to correct. We know what to build on and we know what to, um, where we need to improve. <clears throat> All right, all right, let's move on now. So we're going to take another quick peek at the um, at the uh, passage first strategy. We just covered the, the question first strategy. We're going to cover the passage first strategy because those of you who are doing passage first, I don't want you to feel left out like I forgot about you. I didn't. I didn't. I personally... I use a combination also. I do question first, then passage. It depends on the, the test. So we need to move quickly through the passages. Remember, we're giving ourselves, I'm going to scroll back up. Don't get seasick here when I get all the way back up here, right? We're giving ourselves a total of about 15 minutes to read the passages, and there are four of them. So we got about four minutes per passage so we can't be dawdling we can't be messing around don't try to memorize it don't try to fully understand it it's more important the second bullet point here the more important that we know where stuff is we don't know even have to fully digest it as we're reading through it we just need to know where the important details are, where the key connecting words are, where the opinions are, the big ideas, the main ideas. By the way, where do most authors, particularly if they're writing about science or, or social sciences or even the humanities, where do they tell us their main idea? Where do we like to look for the main idea? Anybody in the chat? Yeah, first paragraph, great place to look.
great place to look. And where are we going to see the wrap up? Where do we look if we want to get the kind of the reiteration of the big idea with maybe a statement of the purpose? Where can we look for that? Where does the author bury that stuff? That's right. Often in their conclusion, in their conclusion, we'll get their wrap up, kind of a, an overall sense of what the author thinks. So those are really important places to look for main ideas. We want to look for those words that convey the mood, the emotion, and the point of view. Remember we did that exercise about different ways John could enter the room. He could skip in if he was, we wanted to let a, the reader know he was happy. He could drag his feet in with his head down if we wanted to let the reader know, right? <clears throat> if he knocked on the door like a cold, rainy wind, you know, the author is telling us, they're giving us good ideas of what is going on in the passage. All right. Then read the questions one at a time after you've read the passage. If you're not going to answer that kind of question, skip it. But read the question and then go find the answer. Where do we look for the answer? Every single time, where is the answer to the question? You guys think I might make you say this over and over, but yeah, it's important to remember the answer is always going to be found in the passage. Nowhere else. Nowhere else. All right. <clears throat> You guys ready to hop on to another test? This is kind of test-like today, right? We're jamming a lot of them in. Holy moly. As a matter of fact, this will be, what, our uh, third one. So it's almost like an entire reading section. So you guys, are, you guys are doing a great job here. So now let's go take another look and... Um, Let's take another look at the test, and what I want you to do is, this time, let's go, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get my app up here so I can take a look. So I'm going to set up a custom test. We're going to do reading. Let's do purpose and function. So we'll do purpose and function. We'll do ooh, words in context. It's always good to do those words in context. Let's do relationships. And main ideas. All right. So when you're ready, give me an R in the chat. If you need a little more time, give me a W in the chat. Ten questions. We're doing ten questions. Ten reading questions. All right. Anybody need a little more time or are we ready to roll? Okay, we're waiting. We're giving everybody a little more time if they need it. If you gave me a W a minute ago, all right, all right, we're waiting. I'm waiting. I'm holding my horses. And if you gave me a W in the chat a minute ago and now you're ready to go, give me an R in the chat. All right. All right. Anybody else need uh, everybody else ready? All right. Looks like we're all set. So I'm going to give you the famous countdown again. 10, 9, 8, 7, 
six, five, four, three, two, one, start. All right. Good job. All right. I will now pause my webcam and mute my microphone so that I don't bother you. So use this time to review the questions. We're going to take about five minutes. Go through question by question. Right? Make your notes. You should be getting pretty good at this by now. Um, and and it looks like it's working out for those of you who are being careful. And I know it will help on test day. I am just certain of it. All right. So I'm going to be here. I'm going to be unmuted. I'll be looking at the chat. And I'm going to stop sharing the screen for a minute because I want to set up for the next thing we're going to do. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, I'm going to stop share, pause my screen share for a second and get my screen set up for the next section. All right, let me know in the chat if you need another couple of minutes to finish up your notes, or if you're ready, just give me an R in the chat. Let me know if you're ready. I know you're out there. Hello. <clears throat> let me know if you're all set. If you are, yeah, good, good. Looks like we're looks like everybody's kind of ready. Fantastic. Okay. All right. We'll give you another minute or two. You need, no, it looks like we're past that. Looks like we're all set. All right. So now what we're going to do is we are going to talk about the ACT essay. Who's going to be taking the essay? Who will be writing the essay? Who knows? Anybody? Let me know in the chat. Yes? No? Okay. All right. Anybody? Any other no's? Not this time? Okay. All right. Well, some of you are and some of you aren't. That's okay. You can never practice writing enough. We will all end up writing stuff 
as we go forward in our lives, whether they are business letters or research papers or novels or history books or speeches or uh, letters to editors of newspapers. Being able to write well is an excellent, excellent thing to know how to do. And the I think ACT, the new ACT essay, is an excellent essay to practice on. So we're going to start with the top here. Can everybody see the, it looks like we can all see that, right? So the, is it big enough? Can everybody read it? Everybody read that? Good. Great. All right. So it's a 40-minute essay. It is optional. And some of you won't be taking it. Some of you won't be writing it. Some of you will be writing it. Make sure that you check what the policy is at the college you are hoping to attend and the ones you are applying to. Make sure some schools require a writing sample, either an SAT essay or the ACT essay. If your school requires it, make sure that one of the times you take one of the tests, you write an essay. So on the ACT essay, and we're going to look at an actual uh, sample prompt in a minute, and we're going to look at a couple of essays also. So the prompt is going to introduce some issue. There'll be a short little paragraph that defines the issue being discussed. Then it will provide you with three points of view. And because this is the test, what sort of points of view do you think various people might have on the topic? How might we describe them in our ACT shorthand? Do you think we'll have plus plus? What else might we have if we have plus plus? Anybody in the chat there? Yeah, we get a plus minus, right? Yeah, pretty good, but there are some maybe some drawbacks. What else might we have? <clears throat> and I'll tell you why we want to be thinking like this, because if you Look, we need to evaluate and analyze each point of view. We need to know whether they, what they think about this topic. Yeah, we could have minus minus, couldn't we? We could have minus plus. So we want to be thinking about the perspectives in terms of our shorthand notations. Do you think they'll all be the same? What do you think? Let me know in the chat. Will all three basically think? Plus, plus, no, that's excellent. They won't, will they? They'll give us a range of viewpoints, a range of viewpoints. So you're going to need to, the three basic things that you'll be doing in the essay, besides all the other things of writing it and things, stuff like that, is you're going to evaluate and analyze each point of view. So what do you think? If you have three different points of view, should you do them each in one sentence, or should you do them each in a paragraph? What do you think? Sentence or a paragraph? Yeah, paragraph. Yeah, we're, we're going to want to focus. We're going to want to focus on each, each one of the points of view as the topic of a paragraph. Now, that won't be our introduction. It won't be our conclusion, but it will be our body paragraphs. So we can pretty much count on having three body paragraphs, one for each of the perspectives. Now, you're going to also have to state and develop your own point of view and explain the relationship between your point of view and those that are presented. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to recommend you kind of go with one of the points of view, that you tend to pick a perspective. 
that will give you some way to look at the other ones and comment on them. So, because you, you're going to have to explain the relationship between your how your point of view relates to their points of view. And the steps we want to take is we need to read and understand the prompt. We need to know what the issue is. We want to then plan our essay. We want to summarize each perspective. We want to think about the strengths and the weaknesses. What insights do they offer? And are they persuasive? And if they are, whether we agree with them or not, what do they use? How do they persuade? And then you need to develop your own take on the topic. What do you think? What do you think about it? And you also have to think about how are you going to support your point of view? If you like perspective too, you should come up with a good example that gives a, a really strong take on perspective too. And once you've gotten all that planning done, you're going to have to hop in and write that essay. <clears throat> and we'll talk a little bit about it, but it's really important. Your opening paragraph, you want to signpost. Does everybody know what signposting means in your opening paragraph? All right. So basically what it, what it means is, um, you want to tell the reader the organizational structure that you are going to use in your essay. You don't want to be coy. You don't want to be shy. You don't want to be tricky about it. You want to let the reader know that you're going to, what the issue is, and you can use the prompt for good ideas of how to state that. You're going to want to say the perspective number one does this and perspective two this and perspective three this and I will right we're going to look at a couple of examples so that's signposting tell the reader what you're going to say then you're going to want to say it in the same order if you want to start with perspective two because that's the one you like the best lead off with that if you want it if you like it the best and you want to finish with it do it that way. Your organization is your own. Just make sure it follows the organizational structure you set up in the beginning. Then in your conclusion, you're basically going to restate each of the perspectives and your take on them and wrap it up in a neat little package. Now you've gotten all this done, you should have a couple of minutes left. Make sure you have a couple of minutes left at the end to take a look for big errors. You don't want to make any big errors. You know, you don't want run-on sentences. You can get away with a few things, but you don't want run-on sentences. You don't want, you know, you can misspell. It's okay. They probably won't bust you. Too bad for that. But you want to look and have some time for proofreading. All right, so we have some samples here, but I want to go and I want to look now at um, the prompt itself. So here we have one, and I will read it, and you can read along with me. Intelligent Machines, and this is what it will look like in your test booklet on test day. <clears throat> Many of the goods and services we depend on daily are now supplied by intelligent automated machines rather than human beings. Robots build cars and other goods on assembly lines where once there were human workers. Many of our phone conversations are now conducted not with people but with sophisticated technologies. We can now buy goods at a variety of stores without the help of a human cashier. Automation is generally seen as a sign of progress, but what is lost when we replace humans with machines? Given the accelerating variety and prevalence of intelligent machines, it's worth examining the implications and meanings of their presence in our lives. So what's the main issue? What's the main topic that, we're, that we are going to be examining here? <clears throat> In the chat, let me know. 
what is the main topic that we are going to deal with here on this essay? Let me know in the chat. Just pop it right in the chat. Yeah, how machines change our lives. Yeah, machines. And what kind of machines? What do they call it? Look at the title. Phones, yeah. They're going to talk about phones, talking about cashiers, intelligent machines generally. All right, now let's take a look at <clears throat> each of the perspectives. And I will read them and we'll kind of comment on them as we go. Perspective one. What we lose with the replacement of people by machines is some part of our own humanity. Even our mundane daily encounters no longer require from us basic courtesy, respect, and tolerance for other people. <coughs> so where would we, where would we, sorry my doggy heard the UPS truck. <laughs> All right, so perspective number one, what does this writer think about intelligent machines? What type of dog is it? It's a little cocker spaniel, but that's not the point here. What we're doing here is we are talking about perspective one. What do we, so what does perspective one think? Plus, 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 minus, minus, plus, minus, minus. Perspective number one. Yeah, I'd have to agree. I think it's uh, kind of a minus minus, right? They think that, uh, what do they think we'll lose when we replace people with machines? Take a peek at perspective one. What do you think, what do they think we'll lose? And what are the examples that they talk about? Courtesy, respect, yeah, part of our humanity, right? So these are the kinds of things that we're going to want to extract from the perspectives in the prompt and make sure that we include when we talk about perspective one. All right, perspective two. Machines are good at low-skill, repetitive jobs and at high-speed, extremely precise jobs. In both cases, they work better than humans. This efficiency leads to a more prosperous and progressive world for everyone. All right, perspective two. What does perspective two think about intelligence machines? Yeah, I'd say perspective two it gives it a plus plus. What do, they, what do they say? What do they tell us they're good at? that we would want to certainly put into our essay. What do they say that, yeah, low-skilled jobs and high-speed, extremely precise jobs, and what will, yeah, at a fast pace, and what kind of results will it produce when we use machines, according to this author? What does this author think? Look at that last sentence, right? Look at the last sentence to get a sense of what perspective two thinks. More prosperous and progressive world, yeah. So they think it's a good idea. So perspective one thinks we'll lose our humanity and respect for each other. Perspective two thinks that, that we won't have to do dangerous, low skill, precision jobs anymore because machines can do them and that everybody will be happier. So let's look at perspective three. So we've had a, a minus minus, we've had a plus plus. Any predictions on what perspective three will be? Yeah, it might be more considered, right? It might be more considered. Intelligent machines challenge our long-standing ideas about what humans are or can be. This is good because it pushes both humans and machines toward new, unimagined possibilities. 
So yeah, there's a plus. It's new unimagined possibilities, but there's also a little minus because there are challenges to our long-standing ideas. So excellent, excellent. So after we've read that blurb and we've seen the three perspectives, the test tells you what you need to do. So these are the instructions, and I figured that they could say it a lot better than I can. So write a unified, coherent essay. So when it says unified and coherent, what do we want to have between our paragraphs? What do we want to make sure that we include when we go from one paragraph to the other? What do we call it when we complete the idea in one paragraph and introduce the idea of, that's right, transitions 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 so we want to have transitions transitions and they can be as simple as first second third or as complicated and as well-crafted as you can come up with, but they must be there. If all, if what you manage best is, you know, in contrast to perspective one, or like perspective one, whatever you do, first we'll look at perspective one, however you do it, make sure you have your transitions. And there again, we're going to analyze and evaluate the perspective. We're going to state and develop our own perspective on the issue, and we're going to explain the relationship between our perspective and those given. And now this last paragraph is important. Your perspective may be in full agreement with any of the others, part and partial agreement or wholly different. Whatever the case, support your ideas with logical reasoning and detailed persuasive examples. So logical reasoning are going to be the connector words because as a result, for example, and this reason, the detailed persuasive examples are going to be examples of that perspective in action. So, and then they're going to give you some space to plan it. Right? And you're going to, and they'll tell you, they'll remind you all of this stuff every time. Use this space below and on the back cover to generate ideas and plan your essay. You may wish to consider the following as you think critically about the task. So since the test maker tells us that we may want to think about these things, should we do that? What do you think? If the test maker says you may wish to consider the following, should we consider those things? Absolutely. That's right. I mean, they're giving us a nice roadmap here of how to write the essay. So let's not try and make up a new, different kind of essay. Let's use the roadmap that the ACT is going to give us to write this essay. So we're going to think about the strengths and weaknesses of the three perspectives. What insights do they offer? What do they fail to consider? So where's the hole in their argument? <clears throat> why they might be persuasive to others, and why they might fail to persuade people. Like, what reason would people think, well, I don't think that's correct. And then use your own knowledge, experience, and values. What's your perspective on this issue? And what are its strengths and weaknesses? And how will you support your perspective in your essay? So think of your examples. All right, so I'm going to go back to the prompt. and the perspectives. Now everybody take a moment, right? So we've got intelligent machines. We've got perspective one that says we're going to lose our humanity and our basic respect and courtesy for each other. Perspective two says machines are going to do stuff that nobody wants to do anymore and it's going to lead to a progressive and prosperous world. And perspective three says it's going to change everything 
but that'll be good because it's going to push us to new and unimagined places. So everybody take a couple of minutes here now, right now, and think about your perspective. And if you like perspective one, pop in P1. If you like perspective two, pop in P2. If you like perspective three, pop in P3. If you've got your own perspective, just give me like a one a one sentence digest of what that perspective is. So I'm going to give you now like a couple of minutes to come up with what you think. Okay? We've got a P2. Anybody else? Okay. All right. Perspective number one. <clears throat> Anybody else? All right. So as you're working on your perspectives, I'm going to bring this up now, and I'm going to roll this up so we can see the perspectives. Perspective one, perspective two, and perspective three. Now I'm going to include this. This 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 essay got a five, which is an excellent score. The each reader can score it up to a six. So I'm going to roll up here. I'm going to get my pen out, going to make some notes here, and we'll read this essay together, and I'll mark it up. And there's also another essay that we'll include. So the first thing we want to do is we want to read the first paragraph and see if we can figure out which perspective this writer, this student is going for. So let me get my pencil here inked up. It is no secret that today's workforce no longer consists entirely of people. Rather, machines are being developed to complete many of the tasks which humans have traditionally done. This can greatly increase productivity and efficiency of simple, repetitive tasks. Many people view this as a great positive and point out that it leads to a more uniform and ex less expensive product, which is better for everyone. So what perspective does the has the author kind of taken the side of here? Which perspective is this, where machines are a great thing? Yep, P2. So this is kind of like a P2. However, so they've introduced it, right? Nice thing. No secret that today's workforce, no longer people, machines are being developed. And look, they take that language right almost right out of here, right? They talk about how machines are doing things that we used to do. All right, let's get back there. Now, however, Nice transition word, right? Nice transition word. Some people are more wary, that's a nice word, of this popular trend of automating the workforce and question whether this progress is truly positive. Notice there are some misspelled words here, but that's okay. Don't worry about that. There are concerns, though. So what perspective is the author dealing with here with the however? Which perspective have they introduced here? However, some people don't think it's such a great idea. Which perspective do we find people who don't think it's the best idea? In the chat, let me hear you in the chat. Yep, perspective number one. So they've introduced perspective number two and perspective number one. <clears throat> 
Their concerns, though, are outweighed by the benefits these machines offer. And so here again, we're talking P2 and maybe P3, right? P2 and P3. All right. Let's see what we do in paragraph number one. I mean, paragraph number two. It is the popular view among companies which are moving toward automation that robots can do many things, many tasks better than humans. For example, in the automotive industry, most of a car's individual components are manufactured by pre-programmed robots which have much greater and more precise output than would be possible for a human. Where did that example come from? right from the prompt they talk about robot cars robots build cars right out of the prompt so use the prompt in addition another great connecting transition word right in addition robots cut down the cost of production by a considerable amount if a company hires an employee, so here's an example. In addition, if, now, is this a real example or a hypothetical? It's a hypothetical, isn't it? Because it's starting out with an if. And hypothetical examples are okay on the ACT essay now. So if a company hires an employee to complete a sim simple task for $50,000 per year, but could instead buy a machine for a one-time purchase of $30,000, it is far more cost-effective to buy the machine. Lower cost of production means that the goods produced can now be sold at a lower price point, which passes the savings on to the consumer. Companies producing goods rightly contend, so this is where we're getting the, the writer's So the essay writer's perspective, that's right. So this is where in this paragraph, this student perspective has, right, because this is the part where we are comparing our idea to their idea, and we've built this nice example here. All right. Paragraph 2. Let's run into paragraph 2 here. Beyond these benefits. So, what do we call that? So, we, what benefits? The ones that we talked about in paragraph 1? So, what do we call this? Beyond these benefits that we want to have between each of our paragraphs. What do we call that? Yeah, that's right. This is transition. This is transition. Trans. Some believe that machines will shape the future for the human race. What perspective are we talking about here? Which one thinks that machines and humans are going to have an unimagined future? That's right, Perspective 3. I'm going to put that back up so you can see Perspective 3. And we'll get back here. My pen back. So, yeah, Perspective 3. So this is P3. Innovation and invention of more new, more intelligent machines can push us as humans towards new, unimagined possibility, right? Came straight from there, new, unimagined possibilities. So use the prompt. Use the prompt. It's perfectly okay. For example, another nice transition. Before the first airplane was invented, people could only dream of human flight. But at the moment of takeoff, a whole new world of unimaginable possibilities was suddenly within our grasp. Though through even just that one invention, an entire multi-billion dollar a year industry was born, and our lives improved and advanced in a multitude of ways. Who can know 
what great advancements may be brought by a more intelligent machine than what we possess today. The possibilities are endless. Okay, so again, perspective. So writer's perspective. Great. All right, so now that we've dealt with perspective number one and perspective number two, or perspective number two and perspective number three, whose perspective are we going to get in the this third paragraph? Anybody want to make a prediction? What do you think? We've talked about perspective two. We've talked about perspective three. What are we going to get in this one? I'm waiting. Hello. Nobody. Yeah, that's right. Perspective number one. There are those, right? So this is a great way to introduce your that that one you disagree with. There are those or some people. Right, kind of creates a separation between the writer and people who think this other way. There are those who are less enthusiastic about all this progress and advancement. They argue that by not having to interact with fellow humans, we no longer are required to be courteous and have tolerance for others. So that's coming straight out of here, courtesy and tolerance, right? Again, straight out of the prompt. While this may be true, so is the author of this essay acknowledging that there's some validity to the argument in Perspective 1? Are they granting them some points? They are, aren't they? Yeah, it's probably a good idea. You don't want to like, you know, go, oh, they're totally wrong, right? Recognize that they do have some points but then defeat the argument by saying it's a minor cost for a major increase in efficiency. Take the example of self-checkout systems in grocery stores. Self-checkout permits consumers to procure their goods and to get out of the store quickly. This might seem, so this is a, this comes, this might seem, this example might seem like a to, small time saver, but, Considering how often this experience is repeated reveals a cumulative effect. Across time, consumers end up saving hours, which improves the efficiency of their daily lives, allowing them, so here we get the writer's perspective again. So this is the writer's perspective. Allowing them to spend time on things that are of greater interest and meaning to them. All right. So that's perspective number one. What do we expect to see now? What's going to be in our last paragraph? What are we going to get in our last paragraph, everybody? We were talking about it in the reading earlier. What do we what do we what do we expect to see in the final paragraph? <clears throat> Hello, anybody home? Did you all go do your homework? Don't go away yet. We have a couple of minutes. What do we expect in our final paragraph? Yes, a wrap-up. We want a wrap-up. We want a conclusion. <clears throat> Three perspective introduced again. Yes, yes, yes. So, whether humans like it or not, whose perspective does this defeat? Whether humans like it or not. That's right. We're going to see the claim, aren't we? So whether they like it or not, that defeats perspective one. doesn't matter what they think. It's going to happen. Machines are becoming more and popular in the workplace and are decreasing the need for humans to work those jobs. So that's going to happen. This writer is saying it's going to happen. This can lead to advancement of society, plus, plus, 
a greater end product or service, plus, plus, and even a lower consumer cost of goods, plus, plus. Many people are frightened. Who are the many people who are frightened? What perspective do they have, the people who are frightened? Yes, that's perspective one, isn't it? Yep, it is, perspective one. But, unfortunately for them, the past is gone, and now we must look to the future. So, what do you think? Pretty good essay? I think it's a pretty good essay. Pretty good essay. All right. So I'm going to save that right now so that I can I'll save it as a, uh, a PDF. <clears throat> and we will send it out. We will send it out. Now, we have a couple of minutes. We won't be able to spend as much time on it. But I want to read quickly the next essay because what did I do with it? Oh, it's way at the beginning, maybe. Yeah. I'm going to read this one here. We won't mark it up. But it's another good essay, and it takes a different point of view. Advances in technology have become so widely accepted in today's culture that very few people are willing to pause and consider the consequences. People get so excited about what new technologies can offer, they, for, off, they forget to question whether there might be negative effects. Without caution and deliberation, replacing the natural with the mechanical world would undoubtedly be disastrous. So which point of view is this person sort of coming from? Which perspective is this writer? Yeah, it's kind of perspective one with their own twist. The economic implications of the potential mechanical takeover alone should be enough to dissuade anyone from moving too fast. In the event the robots are more widely used in the workplace, humans would surely be replaced. At first, businesses would benefit from the efficiency of robots, but eventually a depressed job market would lead to a population that struggles just to feed themselves and their families, let alone purchase the products these robots make. In the long run, here comes the writer's perspective, in the long run, society will suffer if it does not take care to prevent the economic consequences of giving everything over to the machines. And which perspective does the author de defeat in this second paragraph? The one that talks about machines. So it defeats perspective number two in that first paragraph. So I'm going to put a P, I'll put a P there. So this is P2. Even in the face of these obstacles, some people argue that the increasing intelligence of today's machines is a good thing. After all, machine power can decrease human re workload. Computer processors double in power and ability every year. Computers are projected to reach human intelligence as soon as 2025. 20, the implications of this shift are unknown, but one thing is for certain. We are moving into this change too fast to anticipate and prevent damage to the human species. So here they are defeating perspective three. He thinks it's all good. All right. Because of this, it is important that we as a species slow down our technological development so that we might consider all the implications of a change this big. We must figure out how to handle negative societal and cultural consequences. So like being impolite to each other before we embrace total integration of automated intelligent machines. So again, wait. So this is the writer's perspective. Writer says wait. Decreasing the speed with which we incorporate mechanical influence is important because of the potential dangers that lurk in blind acceptance. Not only does the preference for the of the mechanical over the natural interfere with the job market and the economy, so restating their arguments, job market and the economy, but is also has the potential to seriously degrade our culture as a whole. In combination with the uncertainty surrounding the increasing intelligence of machines, it is most assuredly better for the human species that technological progress be slowed so we can, if necessary, prevent additional damage. So again, the writer's perspective is right there. All right, so an excellent essay. So great job tonight, everybody.
excellent job. I will include this as a PDF with the work that we did in the other stuff. Any questions before I let you go off to do your homework? Anybody have any questions? Great job tonight. All right, no questions? Great. Well, I'll give everybody another minute or two. If you have a question, pop it into the chat, but then I'll be wrapping it up. So when you're done, you can bomb out. Great job, everybody. Don't forget to send me emails. I'm going to put in, uh, I'm going to put in my email again, James at scorebeyond.com. Anybody ever watch uh, <laughs> Finding Nemo? I was just saying my email in whale song, according to Dory, right? All right. If there are no more questions, my friends, I will see you. Gosh, it's already Wednesday. I will see you next week, those of you who are in my Monday class. And uh, Wednesday for those who will be in the Wednesday class. So great job tonight. I look forward to seeing you again next time. Keep practicing. Keep practicing. All right. I'm going to I'm going to turn off the meeting. Great job. See you soon.